So I'm just doing another video here um, in my like series or playlist or whatever that I'm doing. So the last video there, I rearranged the hardware. Uh, the main reason I rearranged the hardware was I wasn't able to split out the SATA controller that was on board the way that I thought because I saw two separate drivers load in. I thought that maybe it was capable of splitting. I don't know if it's SRIOV. In fact, it only has one PCIe lane going to it. But whenever I split it, I could only see the top half of the controller. I couldn't get the bottom half to register. But if I dedicated them both to one machine, then I could see both the top half and the bottom half. So whatever it is, it doesn't, they're not fully separated. Um, so basically I, I actually completely redid my Unraid, um, wiped it all out, got rid of everything and just reloaded it up. I mean, I, I moved my key over and stuff, but I, uh, booted it up and then the onboard controller now has my RAID array on it and I loaded all of the RAID array in, everything looked good and stuff like that. And then off of, uh, that USB there, I ended up using unassigned devices to mount it and then, um, Midnight Commander just to copy it over to the ISOs folder. And then from there, I used a Space Invader video teaching me how to SSH in because it's been a while. And I went into my uh, secondary video card that was off and dumped the VBIOS into that ISO folder as well. What that does is when the unit starts, Unraid takes my left side here, my primary um, video card. And then when I have the VBIOS like that, it allows me to live reboot the video card and then dedicate it or like take it away from Unraid and then dedicate it out to the VM. So that's that's what I did. And I have both of them up and running here now. So all I really have put to it right now is some USB controllers. So I have mouse and keyboard controls. And then I put the, uh, the XPG um, 512 gig NVMEs on. And I'm just going to load Windows on those NVMEs right now. Once Windows is up, I'll do a few updates to get uh, some of that program. Then I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to add my other USB controllers in, the SATA controllers and stuff, and then I can configure the other drives and start getting some of that Windows stuff together. And then I'm gonna work on plugging the mess of uh, wires that are in behind the machine in and start you know, setting up all the devices and getting things going, put my, my main one back on my TV there and stuff. But uh, still got a little bit of uh, software work, like an installing and stuff to do from there. And then I might, um, well, I, I probably will, but when I'm remodifying the scripts and getting everything going to get the machines, like all the devices that they want after I have Windows installed, maybe I'll just kind of go through the scripts and kind of explain a few things that I've learned about writing the scripts and how it works and like where your hardware can, like what you see for IOMMU groups and hardware IDs and like just differentiation and like how to set it up. Like one of the other things too is um, the bootloader that use an Unraid's um, KVM setup here. It does support booting from NVMe drives, but the problem is, is you add the NVMe drive in like a PCIe controller, but then you have to actually manually go into the script and write the script for the, that you want the boot order to be one on it. And I can set that up. The one downside is when you go back to the graphical user interface and you make any sort of modifications to the VM, it actually wipes out that custom written part of the script. And then you have to go back into the script mode and rewrite that in every time. So that's one kind of downside to the bootloader. I'm sure in time they'll get it fixed. Like it's not a big deal, you just rewrite it in, but like every time you make a change to it, you gotta go back and write in boot order one or else it loses what to boot on and it wants to boot off of uh, a SATA controller or whatever hard disk it sees as opposed to the NVMe drive. So not a big deal, but uh, I'll, after I've got Windows up and running, I'm gonna actually, I'll log back into into this Aurora from Windows and we can look at some of the scripts and like what exactly I have in the scripts and why it's there and what my dedication is and it, it'll help explain things. And then, um, I don't know, at some point in the playlist here, I'll do a write up. I'm gonna share my scripts and like what I do, especially with the switching from running like two units into like one big massive one and why I did things the way that I did. and. Uh, we'll, we'll put some of that in the next video, but I've got probably another hour and a half here of like quick install on Windows, do some updates, and then I got to like uh, set up my logins and stuff and get all that going and then shut down and start plugging all of the, the hardware into the machine, like all the USB and everything else, setting up all my um, video ports, everything like that, because I actually have it set up that this is going to be... I, I name uh, my my hardware, like all of my VMs, and uh, just just for ease, I actually, I don't know, I, I kind of like it, but I just went with Disney Princess names. So like the Unraid server itself, I'm gonna call Aurora, 
And then this triple monitor setup here is going to be aerial. And then I've also got a Jasmine setup that's going to be over there. And either of them, I'm gonna have them go through my uh, AV amp and then I can set whatever one up on the TV that I want. And I've got uh, Bluetooth controllers and everything else. It's easy to switch back and forth, wireless mouse and keyboard. So I can have it so when, when you're in first person shooters and you want a screen, like either when, when you're running two people, like we can each sit at a desk and run it. And then if I choose, I can go either one to the TV or I can even set it up that I just run one big one to the TV or when I'm running VR. But I'll go through some more of that once I actually have all the scripts written and then I can kind of go through what's in the scripts, the hardware IDs, where I found them, you know, the, the split up at that point. But for now, I'm just gonna keep installing until I actually get to Windows desktops and I can have two of them running and um, we'll go with another video at that point.